an awesome day today. I'm so excited to be filming today because it's the first video that I've done post-op. So, say hello to the girls. I haven't named them yet, so I am open to name suggestions down below in the comments. All jokes aside, I'll be posting my titty talk video or my boob job vlog journey video on my vlog channel tomorrow. I'll leave a link down to that vlog channel. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. Today's video, I wanted to talk about keratin bonded extensions. And I've never done a video on this and I don't really know why. I've had these extensions for two years now and I love them to bits and I could not recommend them more. But I really want to tell you a lot of in-depth things about them and I also want to answer some of your questions to clear up a lot of misconceptions that permanent extensions seem to have. So I'm not 100% sure on the science behind it, but from what I understand, keratin is a protein that your hair is made up of. And each one of my little extension bonds is glued to my actual hair with that keratin protein. So you can see one individual strand. My hair has been attached here and there's a bond here and there's extension right here with my actual hair in there as well. This is what the bonds look like. They're individually placed every so often and each individual bond looks like that and it's attached to that much hair. So, that is what it looks like. If you're wondering how these bonds are applied, I have a video that I'll link right up here of the first time that I ever got these put in. So my hair was really bleach damaged, it was short, and it was quite brittle. And as you can see, my own natural hair has grown so much since that time. The majority of it sits right at the top of my boobs. So to start off the questions, I want to address the main question that I always get about these type of extensions. Do they damage your hair? It's like anything else. If you take good care of it, it's not going to break, it's not going to get damaged, and you're not going to have a problem with it. But for some reason, people tend to forget that. A lot of the time when people get extensions, or they get blonde hair, or they get a boob job, they think that that's that. You know, once it's in, it's done. But that's not the truth. Aftercare is so, so important if you want it to last, if you want it to look good, and if you want it to be how your stylist or your surgeon or your colorist wanted it to be. You have to do your aftercare. Typically, a salon can choose from so many different options when it comes to hair extensions. But if it's a reputable salon, they will always choose Remy hair. What Remy hair is, is hair that's considered to be in the best possible condition. The cuticle is kept intact and it's all running the same direction. So it's smooth, it's shiny, it feels soft, and it's strong. The benefit of Remy hair is that it'll be better conditioned throughout its entire lifetime compared to any other type of hair. So it'll be shinier, it'll have less tangles, stuff like that. Your hair also has an ethnicity, and I know that that sounds crazy, but if it's real hair, it has to be grown somewhere, right? So I use European hair, and the reason why I use European hair over something like Indian or Asian hair is because European hair is a lot not thinner, but it's not as thick and as coarse. So my own natural hair is quite thin and it's really, really small strands of hair. It's not thick, it's not coarse. And if I got extensions that were thick and coarse, it wouldn't mesh with my hair, it wouldn't look proper, it just wouldn't look like my hair. It would look like somebody else's hair attached to my head and that is not what you want with extensions. So needless to say, it's absolutely crucial to ask your salon what kind of hair they're using for your extension. There's also different extension weights. And so what I mean by that is how much hair is actually in that one extension. Extension. So if I grab one of mine, this one extension right here is one gram. So it's one gram of hair. There's also different lengths. You can get tons of different lengths, generally shorter lengths or cheaper, longer lengths or more expensive. I mean more hair, you're obviously paying a little bit more. Mine are a 20 inch and they come just past my boobs and I like that length. I probably wouldn't go any longer because it's already a lot of aftercare for this much hair. You can also choose how much hair goes in your head. So say if you already have a lot of hair, so you have pretty healthy hair, you just want a little bit of length, you might only choose to get a half head of extensions. So meaning they would only put extensions just through the back and through the sides. They wouldn't put any up top, they wouldn't put any up top near the back. They'd just put a little bit underneath and that would give you the length. That of course will be a lot cheaper than getting a full head like myself. Now that brings me to prices. It's really hard to say what you should be paying for this type of extension because it's different all over the world with every different salon. Personally, my best friend is my extensionist and hairstylist and colorist, so she only charges me typically for just the product and not the actual labor. Generally, when I've gone into a salon and I've inquired about keratin bonded extensions, they're usually anywhere between $900 and $1,500. Of course, again, that does depend on how many you're putting in, your length, and the quality of the hair itself. A lot of you have asked me, is there a specific shampoo or conditioner or anything special that you have to do while washing your hair with this type of extension? I personally haven't bought any type of shampoo or conditioner that's specifically meant for my extensions. I've just used regular stuff. But with that said, I use regular stuff that is really high quality. I don't use drugstore shampoos and conditioners on my hair because I feel like I spent way too much on my extensions 
to skimp out on aftercare. It is so important to have good products if you're going to spend that much money on an extension because the good products will help that extension last for longer, therefore your money stretches longer. So I don't mind paying for a really good shampoo and conditioner if it does help my hair in the long run. As for washing it, there's not really any difference. Your hair feels a little bit heavier, especially the first couple times you get in the shower, just because you have a lot more hair. For styling and stuff like that, nothing's different, you just have more hair again. So make sure you do a lot, a little bit more time towards your hair styling because it takes a little bit longer. Another question is, how does it affect styling your hair? Personally, since I have pretty short hair to begin with, so just to the top of my boobs, and it's really, really thin. If You guys have probably seen it in previous videos when I had my extensions out in January. Anyways, since my hair is pretty thin, I have a lot of extensions in. Like, I have probably about 250 pieces, if not more, in my head of extensions. So, for someone like me who has that many in it, there are going to be a couple different things that I can't really do that well with my hair, like half-up styles. So, if I pull my hair half up, you can see that you can see the bonds and that's not really something that you kind of aim to have done so typically I like to keep my hair you know in a down or up type thing when I do put my hair up and I actually like full-blown put it up if I spend the time to I can pull it up so that you can't really see the extension but there's no chance I can do like a full tight to my head style because you can see the bump where the extension is attached but if I'm doing just like a, a looser or messy style um, I can just put it up like that and you can't really notice. And the thing is, is that the extension is the same color as your hair, so it kind of blends in anyways. You can't really notice unless you're looking really close. A lot of you have asked, with thin hair, can you see the bonds poking through? And honestly, if you have a bit of volume around the top and if your stylist has placed them correctly, you shouldn't be able to see them at all. Like if I turn my head like this, you can't see any of the bonds. Although if I go like this and I pull it really, really tight, you can kind of see the bulk of the bonds poke through. But um, day to day, you can't really see it at all, as long as the placement has been correct. I do think the nice thing about styling your hair with keratin bonded extensions is, out of any other extension option, these are probably the most easiest to hide the fact that you have extensions. Another question is, do you get them moved up or do you replace the entire lot? You don't ever get them moved up. They're completely glued into that exact spot, so they last for however long you have them in, then you get a new set. Although I will say after about two months, I go back in and I get probably 15 pieces put back all around in spots where they have either fallen out or look a little bit sparse. And yes, they can fall out if you're being you know, rough with your hair and you can pull one out. Or say if you run a heat tool over top of it and you damage the bond, it can fall out. Definitely if you have healthier hair, like less bleached or less damaged hair, it'll slip down the hair shaft a little bit so it can slip out of your hair. Um, and once it's out, it's out. You just have to get a new one put back in. Typically, um, I don't really find I have a huge problem with them falling out. You know, I might get maybe 10 of them fall out in the span of three or four months, but that is why I go back into the salon and I get them put back in whatever spots that I need them. And I'm only charged a really, really small fee, like 20 bucks or whatever, for putting that many back in. So it's not a big deal at all. And I kind of like the refresher because it kind of refreshes your entire look. Your hair just looks like it's just been done when you do just a couple more pieces in your head. Another question is, do they mat up at all? No, they should not mat up as long as you're taking good care of them. Again, I stress the aftercare. And I talk a lot about this in the second part of this video where I'm showing you how I style them and how I take care of them from shower to bedtime pretty much. As long as you're doing those proper steps, you won't have any issue. Another big question is, can you swim in the ocean with them? Yeah, it's absolutely no problem, but I would say either wear your hair in a low ponytail, a braid, or let it flow free. I know it sounds kind of weird, but I found I have the better luck if I just let my hair flow free in the ocean. Religiously, before I go swimming, I always put this product in it. It is um, CPR brand, the Frizzy Phase 1 Smoothing Cream. Essentially, this helps protect from heat, humidity, solar, salt water, and chlorine. So this is great for blonde hair if you have blonde hair because chlorine can damage blonde hair. I speak about that in my blonde hair care video, so don't miss out on that video. I will link it down below. I use this or a hair oil or a conditioner if I'm really stuck in my hair before I go in the ocean especially because I feel like it smooths my cuticles down and it really, really protects my hair from the harshness of the salt water or the chlorine. Somebody's asking how long the process is of putting them in. Completely depends on how many you're getting put in your head. Like I said, if you have a lot like me, it can take a couple hours. I think the first time that Brooke did them on me, it took about four hours. Um, she is so quick at it now, she can probably put in my whole head in about two hours. 
But um, if you're not getting that many in, I mean, you can get them put in like wham bam, super fast. If you're only getting a touch up, um, like I said, a little half pack or whatever, Brooke can do that in like not even 20 minutes. Somebody's asking, does this type of extension work with short layers? Yes, it does. And I speak from experience. I had really, really short layers of damaged bleach blonde hair and it worked on me. You definitely can tell that you have extensions, but if they cut your hair correctly, at least it'll be very minimally noticed, especially when your hair is curled. Definitely would recommend curling your hair because when you have your stick straight hair and you have a really short extension or if you have a really short layer, you can totally see where the layer is and where the next layer is and where the next layer is. But when it's curled, at least it's curled into each other and it's a little bit messier looking, so it's easier to hide. The main thing is after application, your stylist has to cut your hair properly. With extensions like these, you can't just cut like a cross and do layers like that. You have to slide cut. So they take the hair and they cut while sliding the scissors down your hair and that creates like wispy layers and it just blends your hair so much nicer. Brooke does show that in my application video of when I got these applied the very first time. So do check that out if you have kind of any questions of how it looks with a shorter layer. The only bummer about having them with a shorter layer is that when it's windy or stuff like that, your shorter layers can fly up in the wind and you can see the extensions underneath. I used to have that happen all the time and especially since I have really, really thin light hair that does happen to me but I mean there's only so much you can do right? Did they put stress on your scalp? The first day or so that you have them yeah it definitely does you'll notice I usually have a headache the first day that I get them in and it feels like it's been pulled but only because the hairstylist has to pull your hair a little bit while they're applying and so every individual piece over 200 times in my head has been pulled yeah your head's probably gonna hurt a little bit so I always take a Tylenol or whatever pretty much an hour after I get them put in, but I feel fine the next day. Another question is, are they comfortable when you sleep? Definitely not for your first, you know, two or three nights, and especially if it's your first time ever getting a permanent extension in, you're gonna feel them, and they are tight to your head for the first, you know, week or so, so you feel them on your pillow. It's not particularly comfortable, but like I said, take a Tylenol, you'll get over it, it'll be fine. A good question that somebody's asked is, how are the color matches with these extensions? Totally depends on where your salon is getting their product from, but I do find, and my hairstylist finds, that most blonde colors generally come a lot warmer or more yellow toned than the average blonde. I mean, yeah, you might keep your blonde really, really yellowy and, and warm, but I definitely don't, and so when you put an extension in that's yellowy or warm, lots of girls find like, oh my gosh, it doesn't match with my natural ashy hair. So what you'd have to do is either get the salon to tone them beforehand, or generally I find that I can just use purple conditioner, like a really strong one, and that'll tone it down enough. And I'm pretty sure that that was what Shannon had with hers as well. When she got hers in, her natural hair is quite a bit ashier than the extension. All you need to do is purple shampoo or conditioner and they're like perfect match. As for highlights and lowlights, it's no problem at all because they can order packs of slightly different colors. So currently in my hair, I have two different colors. I have a platinum blonde, which is kind of my highlight. And then I do have a couple pieces that are a bit more of a low light throughout. For brunettes, I don't think it's an issue whatsoever. It's really easy to match brunette colors as well as redhead colors and darker colors. A lot of you have also asked me, can they be dyed? I wouldn't recommend it even though you can. The main reason I wouldn't recommend it is because it does damage that extension and you want that extension to be in the best shape for its entire lifetime until you get a new set. So any type of bleaching or dyeing will, you know, damage it. So I'd probably say keep with the same hair color as long as you have that set of extensions in. If you want to change to a different hair color, do it in between getting a new set in and just order the new set in whatever color you're planning on being. Somebody's asking, are there any activities that you shouldn't be doing when you have hair extensions? Not particularly, like I said, if you're careful when you're swimming or in the ocean or in the pool, you're fine as long as you take you know, precaution as well as you deal with the aftercare of that. You make sure that you are conditioning it using a good hair mask and brushing it out. Um, I would say if you're going to be somewhere really, really windy, like in a convertible or something, I would put your hair back just because if it does get really, really windy and messes up your hair, it's easier for your hair to match. So if I was riding on a motorcycle, I'd put my hair in a braid and put my helmet over top. Another commonly asked question is, why would I recommend keratin bonded extensions over any other type of permanent extension? When I answer this, I'm totally answering it from just my opinion and my experience. I mean, I'm sure there is lots of other exceptions and other people have other extension methods that they love and that's great if it works for you. But I would definitely recommend a keratin bond to anyone who has thin fragile hair or colored hair or something like that because it is going to be a lot gentler on your hair. 
like a microbead, say if I tried to put a microbead in my thin blonde hair, it would tug it, it would break it, it would be heavy on it, it would cause way too much stress, and that's just not good for my hair. Whereas Keratin Bond, it's just stuck on my hair, it's not particularly heavy, blends in really well, and it's not going to cause like damage and pulling on my hair as opposed to a metal bead. Or say with a, like a woven weft, when you put in like a sewn in hair extension and it's a weft of hair that's woven into like a really really tiny braid like they braid a tiny tiny braid along the back of your hair and then they sew in an extension when you braid something and you're pulling that hair really really tight and close to your scalp that's going to create breakage and for someone like myself that's a huge no-no because my hair breaks easily and that that would just cause even more breakage Tape extensions, I wouldn't recommend because I just think they look really, really bad in most cases. I mean, no offense if you have them. I mean, you never know. It could look nice in your hair, but from the ones that I've seen, they're generally not really, really great extensions. It's kind of like the cheaper option. Um, you can also really, really see them when you put your hair up and stuff like that. So, I mean, personally, they're not my thing and I wouldn't recommend them to somebody else. So yeah, that's probably why I would recommend the Keratin Bond. Also, you don't have to get them like touched up. Like they just stay in your hair. That's it. Like they're once they're in, they're in. You don't have to go in for alternate appointments. You don't have to pay more money. They're just they're in. Okay, when it comes to getting them out, there is no like set expiry date. Pretty much it's just personal preference. You are going to know when you want them out and when they don't look good anymore and when they're patchy because a couple of them have fallen out, you're gonna know. For myself, I don't get them removed until about six or seven month mark because like I said, I baby mine as well as I get a couple you know, replacement ones put in throughout the time of getting them. So I really stretch it out. When you do get them removed, make sure you do go to a salon. I know a lot of people think that they can do it themselves, and hypothetically, yes, you could, but you'll probably damage your hair a lot more if you do it yourself. What a salon uses is pretty much an acetone-based liquid, so pretty much your strongest, strongest nail polish remover, almost similar to that. They put that on the bond, and they twist and twist and twist and pull and twist, and then it'll slide off your hair. Yes, sometimes that will take a little bit of hair with it, but honestly, I haven't had any problem with breakage. Through and through, after two years of having these extensions and getting them put in and taken out and put in and taken out and bleach blonde hair, like I have really fragile hair and I honestly haven't had any issue with breakage with this type of extension. And I would say that I'd probably be the best kind of model to put that on because my hair is bleach blonde and it is fragile and if a hair is going to break, it's probably gonna be this kind of hair. But my hair has been in the best condition that it's ever been in since having these extensions and having blonde hair, and I would totally recommend them. There's a lot of girls that do have horror stories about these type of extensions, but you have to look at everything. What kind of extensions did they actually have? What type of hair was it? What did they do at the salon? How did they apply them? How did they care for them afterwards? Like, there's so many different factors. So I think that that answered the majority of your guys' questions. Now I'm gonna jump into how I care for my hair extensions from literally damp hair to when I go to bed. So I hope you enjoyed the second part of the video and I hope that I answered all of your questions. If not, please do leave your question down below and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can.